Hello everyone, welcome back to the Film Insight channel. In today's video, you are in for some fun. We're going to talk about some of the iconic moments featured on Kitchen Nightmares that turned out to be memes. So sit back, relax, and without further ado, let's get right into the content, guys. Soup of the day. I was just seeing what you ordered. I thought those were really great choices. And my chef always makes the best soups. Season 6 introduced us to Prohibition Grill, which was opened in 2008 by Rishi Brown, a professional belly dancer. With no experience in the restaurant industry, I don't know anything about what goes on back there. Brown was running the restaurant alongside her dance company. Oh my gosh, the meat cooked and raw on the same shelf. But her restaurant was not doing great, and she was losing at least $100,000 a year. At least $2,000. That's $8,000 a month. That's a hundred grand a year. Does that not sink in anyone's mind? When Chef Ramsay set out to try and understand where the problem was, he was in for a shock. While ordering off the menu, he realized that the soup of the day was the same for the last two weeks. What's the soup of the day? The soup of the day is jalapeno corn chowder. Mm -hmm. What was it yesterday? Jalapeno corn chowder. Oh, so it's soup every two days. And last week? Uh, so soup of the week. It's soup of the week. Uh, let's yeah. have a soup of the week. <laughs> yes. When Chef Ramsay confronted Brown, she was clueless. She had no idea that soup of the day meant a new soup every day. Unbelievable. Wow. <laughs> I didn't realize that soup of the day meant a fresh soup every day. <laughs> Oh my God. When the soup came, it failed to impress Ramsay. It was sloppy and gnarly. The reason behind it was the lazy chef Ricky. When was that cooked? After another. <laughs> it's sour. He not only took breaks during busy hours, but also demanded tips from the servers. Ricky had tricked Brown into thinking it was the standard protocol to give tips. Ricky was fired after Chef Ramsay assured Brown of getting her a better chef. I don't wanna, I don't wanna beat around the bush about it. Unfortunately, I'm letting you go. After renovation, the restaurant received mixed reviews. Regular customers preferred the old menu, whereas new ones adored the new look. However, in 2016, Brown sold the restaurant to Brenton Holland, and in 2017, it was closed for good. My name is Nino. So how good is the food? How would you rate it out of 10, Nino? 10. A 10? Wow. Yes. Nino's Italian restaurant was a part of season six. It was opened in 1958 by Inge and Vincenzo. The restaurant was taken over by Nino, Vincenzo's oldest son, after Vincenzo was diagnosed with dementia. Vincenzo's other children, Kania and Michael, also helped manage the restaurant. However, the restaurant suffered a massive loss, which compelled Inga to use her retirement money to keep things afloat. When Chef Ramsay sat with the siblings to look deeper into the problem, Nino was the only name that surfaced. Nino was too full of himself. He claimed that he would personally clean every nook and cranny of the restaurant, but the place was a mess despite all the efforts. Till about four, maybe weekends usually I'll come in for uh, extensive cleaning. Sounds like you do a lot of cleaning. Cleaning? What are you talking about? The restaurant is a mess. <laughs> Nino's brother Michael told Chef Ramsay that Nino does nothing and wastes time trying to chat up with the customers or by watching TV in the office. A lot of times sitting down with customers, I mean, not just visiting, promoting the business, sitting down and talking for long periods of time in the middle of lunch. The best part was when Michael tried to imitate how Nino introduced himself to the customers by saying, my name is Nino. Just like last night, he ran up to every table and said, hello, my name's Nino. Nino was stubborn, but he also couldn't even handle criticism, especially those coming from Chef Ramsay. Whenever Chef Ramsay gave any feedback, Nino would jump into an argument. So it's all soggy and flowery, so it's... Well, I mean, I'll do something like that in the kitchen, but not in the dining area. That wouldn't be appropriate. After featuring on Kitchen Nightmares, Nino received mixed reviews. Regular customers hated the new decor, so the management switched to the original dated design. However, in August 2016, the restaurant had to pull the shutters down. My food isn't that bad. If I lost the restaurant, I will lose my dream. I lost my baby. This is my baby. Mojito, owned by Marcello and his ex-wife Catalina, was a restaurant featured in the third season of Kitchen Nightmares. 
The reason their marriage eventually fell apart was because of the restaurant. Though they decided to continue working together, their constant fights ruined the restaurant's environment. Soon the restaurant was drowning in a debt of $300,000. Marcello was initially very confident about his food. I'm gonna like the food. I think that 97% of my food will be great. But seeing Chef Ramsey sending dishes back one after the other, he began to doubt himself. You would like a hot soup, not cold? Who said that? Ah, uh, Ramsey said. First, the chicken soup was cold, the black beans and rice were salty, and finally, the tilapia fish was raw. With every dish returned, the fight between Marcello and Catalina intensified. Oh, what's wrong? Hey! Excuse me. Sensor Catalina, please. For some looking at handle pressure. Both Chef Ramsay and other diners could hear what was going on in the back of the house. Their chef, Eduardo, revealed that the couple always got into crazy arguments right before the customers. With an average of three stars, the reviews were okay, but not that great. After the makeover, thanks to Chef Ramsey's intervention, Mojito was doing better. They included new policies on fresh food and food wastage. Even though the restaurant's success improved, Marcello and Catalina did not get back together. After a brief run, unfortunately, the restaurant was permanently closed on 2nd of March 2016. I have the best pizza. I disagree with you about my dog. I think I have a great dog. Really? Yes. Pantaleone's was a part of season 7. The restaurant was opened in 1985 by Pete and Paulette. Pete and Paulette's son Josh and their grandson Gabe were also a part of the restaurant business. Pantaleone's was doing great in the 90s, so they were deemed to have the best pizzas in Denver. It even received many good reviews and won awards, but Pete's stubbornness and arrogance started eating into the restaurant's profits as the years passed. When Chef Ramsay and the whole family sat down for discussion, it came to light that on Sundays and Mondays, the restaurant remains closed. And the only reason for this was Pete, who loved watching football instead. He closed two days a week. Uh, Sunday and Monday are closed. Uh, and why are you closing on Sunday? Sunday? Because yeah. I want to watch football. <laughs> the restaurant would remain closed even at noon, as Pete loved his siesta more than his business, if that weren't enough. His what? Nap. Nap. Siesta. Sleep. The restaurant closes because Pete wants a nap. <laughs> yeah, like they do at Greece. Chef Ramsay's only hope for the restaurant was their pizzas, which Pete claimed to be the best. However, when he received his order, the pizza did not meet his expectations. The dough was too raw and thick, and the base was too greasy. Nothing much could be expected from the rest of the menu, too. But Pete wasn't going to give up. He was adamant and argued that his food was the best, no matter what Chef Ramsay thought. Eventually, after his family threatened to leave him, he finally gave in and agreed to reform the restaurant. Post-kitchen nightmares, things got off to a bumpy start. Pete revealed that the restaurant was experiencing issues with regular customers who didn't like the change in menu. However, the problems were short-lived as Chef Ramsay decided to pay another visit to fix things up. Currently, they are still open and doing great. The restaurant has 4-star ratings on Yelp and 4.5-star ratings on TripAdvisor. It looks like they finally have the best pizza. The wedding soup is so sour that I want a divorce. And that food was bland. I, I can't believe you're telling me my food sucks. I can't believe it. Sabatiello's was a part of season two. The restaurant owner, Sammy Satamba, had always dreamed of opening a restaurant since the age of eight, when he started working at his brother Benny's Pizzeria. The restaurant was initially doing great, but it started going south over the years. The once bustling restaurant was crumbling due to the $1 million debt that Sammy couldn't pay back. The main reason for the downfall was the owner, Sammy. His attitude and behavior were keeping the customers away. He was also rude to his staff. I'm like so upset inside. I'm fumigating. Tonight look like a a real job tonight. Most of the reviews were negative and targeted Sammy's obnoxious behavior more than the food. When Chef Ramsay sat down to try the soup of the day, he was served a wedding soup. It's hideous. Like a mishmash of bits of 
put together and brought to the boil and anemic grey meatballs in there. When Chef Ramsay wasn't too happy with the soup, Sammy interjected that the soup would make anyone want to get married. That's to get him in the mood to get married. I'd rather get divorced. Oh my God. Chef Ramsay retorted that he instead got a divorce after having bad soup. Nevertheless, after all the renovations, Sammy blamed Kitchen Nightmares for the loss of income when it was closed for renovation. Not like it took too long, but he had to blame someone, right? With an arrogant owner like Sammy, the restaurant's fate was already predetermined. Sabatiello closed down permanently in October 2008. Amy's Baking Company Complications Right. Do you have children? Well, we have three little boys, but they're trapped inside wow. cat bodies. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, they're cats. Part of season six, Amy's Baking Company was one of the most iconic Kitchen Nightmare episodes. The restaurant was opened in 2006 after Sammy and Amy got married, and it was funded entirely by Sammy. Amy was the head chef and ran the kitchen all by herself. Sammy had invested over a million dollars into the restaurant. Sammy and Amy's behavior was something that none of us expected. Pepper pe ravioli, stop the it's ready. epic. Sammy. Stop it, they're leaving. I don't care. I am not going to do this. Stop it. Fuck them, stop what? It's in the oven. They were rude and disrespectful and were never kind to take criticism. Before Chef Ramsay's arrival, the Kitchen Nightmares crew showed us a glimpse of Amy's baking company. Look at him, he's like, where's my pizza? <laughs> really? Send him home! You want to wait, you wait. You don't want to pay what did you have in your from here. Do you understand? Sammy? Do you understand? Uh -huh. You f*** yourself! Go out, you mother Sammy displayed poor customer service and bluntly asked customers to leave if they didn't like the food. Even you don't know what is wrong with it. Is your first time? Last time. And last time, don't come back, madam. In another instance, Sammy argued with a customer who wasn't happy with his salad. On the other hand, Amy was threatening to call the cops and was also seen making derogatory remarks to other customers. Listen me. I'm in the office. Don't call the police, you crazy. Where's the pizza? It's in the oven. He can suck it. When Chef Ramsay arrived, things were no different. At first, he was wowed by lovely interior and decor. Amy's chocolate mousse cake blew Chef Ramsay off his feet. It was too good to be true. Also, the restaurant had one of the cleanest kitchens to be ever featured in Kitchen Nightmares history, but it had some severe flaws. I mean, look, dates, labels, yes, everything, yeah. sectioned off. Wow, what a pleasure. The first thing he found out was that Sammy and Amy had trust issues. They had fired over a hundred staff members over the years. Chef Ramsay, while ordering food, found out that his server Miranda was not making any tips as everything was taken away by Sammy. She highly depended on her fixed hourly pay. When Chef Ramsay questioned Sammy, Sammy explained that taking all the tips was because he did most of the work. Upon tasting the food, Chef Ramsay didn't like most of it. The most shocking part was when Chef Ramsay discovered that the ravioli was store-bought. It has to be one of the most confused ravioli dishes I've ever seen and tasted in my entire life. Chef Ramsay always tried his best to bring changes, but Sammy and Amy were extremely rude and headstrong. Sammy retaliated rudely when Chef Ramsay tried to stop Sammy from taking Miranda's tip at the dinner service. That you're taking them yeah. because this service deserves yeah. them. You want to speak with me? Yeah, I want to speak You want to fuck with me? I will fuck, I with, you. fuck with you. At the same time, Amy, on the other hand, fired their only food runner, Katie, because she tried to correct Amy. You don't need to question me, Katie. You can go home right now. I wasn't doing anything. I wasn't doing anything. You can't quit. She is quitting. She has the attitude. She comes to the kitchen tonight. She's like, I set a table. She said, Are you sure? Are you my boss? Chef Ramsay was smart enough to realize that nothing he would say or do could change Sammy or Amy. Not their behavior, not their attitude, and not their food. He left without making or suggesting any reformations. Well, it's finally happened. After almost 100 kitchen nightmares, I've met two owners who I could not help. And it wasn't because I didn't want to, it was because they are incapable of listening. After the show, Amy's Baking Company became a phenomenon for all the wrong reasons. People visited the place like tourists to verify whatever was shown in the front. Sammy and Amy went on accusing kitchen nightmares of sabotaging them. After a few years, Amy's Baking Company was shut down, and the couple moved to Sammy's hometown in Israel. 
With that, we have unfortunately come to the end of the video. Hope you enjoyed the video. Do you remember any memes that sprang out of kitchen nightmares? Let us know in the comments below. Suppose you did, then give us a like and share. Also, hit the subscribe button to never miss out on our updates.